Hi, oh, welcome to another Eagle 6 video. Just going to do quite a quick one here on um, how to shim an AEP gearbox. Um, I thought it would be a, a good one really, so I don't think I've seen too many uh, guides out there for it. It's just, um, it's quite intricate, so it's just getting the the sort of balance right. Um, so if I sort of go over with what I'm doing, we start off here. Uh, after having cleaned all the all the gears, uh, got rid of all the dirt and crap off there, if you know what I mean. I've just loosened the motor slightly here, so it just sort of rises up, so we can get this in and out. Uh, for the example, I've just taken everything out of there. Uh, it's easier to sort of, you know, get the shimming right that way. Um, then what, when we've got nothing in there apart from just sort of the the last gear here, we put the casing on. Uh, then what we do, hold it nice and tight, or do the screws up, whichever you want, want to do. And then see if there's any sort of play in the gear. We see here that we want a bit of play because we don't want it over tight. We don't, we don't, you know, to lose rate of fire. But what we want to do is we don't want what they call bounce, where the the gears are, are bouncing around in there and causing excess wear or noise. Um, but yeah, but obviously it's finding that balance between the two. So we see here that there is a little bit too much movement in that. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll just quickly take this top off. So we know it needs a shim of some description. We've got a pack here with a various ones in. When we move this with the motor pushed all the way down, It does. It does seem to connect quite nicely with the with the gear there, with the, the motor. It's not quite though. Basically, with motor height, you want this motor gear here perfectly, the back of it, perfectly in line with like the outer edge here of the of the gears. All right, so we could potentially. Wind that one in just slightly. Hang on. So just tighten it slightly on the motor height, just so it's in line. And we need to make sure that when it's spinning, it's not too tight on the motor. It's also a good thing. See, I think we can just do a tiny small shim on there. Let's have a look. It comes a standard with quite a large one, but obviously once you change the to bearings, it could be an issue. Let's try the thin one. Probably only have time for to get in the old ten minute thing. Probably only have time for one. Of these gears, try and keep an eye on time. That's right, so quite a thin one here. Mm. Small and silver is 0.2 millimeters. Let's try that one. On there. Try another one. I hate this. I lose so many bits and parts when I do air soft stuff. It's probably just down the floor somewhere. Try to put it on there this time. Motor up. Just so we can edge that in there. Shim under it. See how it works with it now. See that sounds. It sounds, and that's the key, really. You know, just uh, it is an art. There's no rule to it. Every gearbox is different. So uh, uh, even TMs, you know, which are usually a safe bet. I mean, there's there's still always a chance that there's going to be you could fit a set of guard of gears and need to shim differently from your TM gears. You could fit a different set of bearings, which are you know 0.1 millimeter thicker than other bearings. So it's good to 
do each one, if you know what I mean. I mean, uh, take each one on its own merits. And so we know that one sounds fairly good now, but what we need to do is obviously check and see how much total play it has now. And there's hardly any there. Like I say, it's it's fine in somewhere in between. Not too. You have to always remember that when it when you've got all the gears uh, screws all tightened up, you'll lose a tiny tiny bit extra. So I don't like to. I like to see a tiny bit, ever so tiny bit of movement, just to know that it's not overly tight. This is the kind of thing you're looking for, just, you know, just completely effortless spinning, spinning, spinning. I mean, if this is what it's doing right now, then that's what it does when it's, you know, firing. How long we got? doesn't say. Well, that's good. Alright, let's try another one. Eeny meeny, miny mo. Let's put it in there. Let's put the casing on. Let's check and see how it Hold it tight. And see that one's fairly on its own. I mean, that there is about perfect. See how we've got a tiny, tiny bit, but not, you know, large movement. I mean, that one, I'm still, I might go one bigger on that one. Just, just a tiny bit extra off it, you know? Just so I might go with the next one up. Which is uh, 0.3 millimeters. Just like I say, you know, if it, if you've got any doubt, you know, just give another one a go, a little go, and see what it does. More really soon. I think that sounds even better. I mean, this time it took all that extra, took the extra bit of play out of it. Let's just put the other one in because we know the other one is good to go. See, look, it's nice, isn't it? Oh, see, that's better. Look, I mean, it's it's there, you know, but just you know, there's it's not tight or anything. It's just a, oh, there's you know hardly any movement at all, which is what you want. You you don't want it 100 percent, you know, not going to budge. But you just want no slack. So in here, that there is a tiny bit, but that's good. So because when we tighten the gearbox, that might take a little bit out of that. But we've got that allowance, you see. And then the other one's the same, we like that. Let's go 
the next one. Let's check and see how much overall play we got to start off with. And see how this one goes up and down? Got at least two mils. So what we need to do is we need to check the position with another gear behind.